Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We're gonna be discussing really horrible makeup. I don't know why I'm smiling so big. These videos sometimes are really uncomfortable for me to do, but you know what? I do them anyway, because I wanna give you guys my true, authentic opinion, good and bad on makeup. And I have been prepping this room, which if you guys saw Mr. Kate's makeover of my beauty space, then you know how many drawers are in here. It is totally out of control. I am prepping to do a big you know, beauty room tour and makeup collection and my bad bin is overflowing. Basically, if a makeup item really lets me down, it gives me horrible looking skin, color, pigmentation, blotchiness, then it goes straight into the naughty pile. So I have 10 of the items pulled that I wanna share with you guys today. And I always encourage you to watch these videos with a grain of salt. We all have different skin types and wants out of our makeup. So if any of these things are items that you really love, then please keep using them. This is just my opinion. I just wanna give you like a little sneak preview of what is coming soon because I have been putting Pretty Vulgar to the test for quite a while now. You guys have been requesting it like crazy. I'm wearing like five of their lip products on my mouth at the moment. That will be on Thursday, so please stay tuned for that. It's gonna be an exciting week. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is from Armani. You guys probably never thought that I would be saying, ooh, this Armani product is awful, but it has happened. There is something that I just don't think is worth the splurge. This is the Giorgio Armani Mastro UV Skin Defense Primer Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 50. You use this as a primer. It comes out really white and it leaves a little bit of a cast on your skin. And that's the problem that I have with this. Texture wise, it's a bit shiny. It's a bit amplifying of your pores. I know it's an SPF 50, but it's just not my favorite formula for SPF and I wouldn't recommend it. And I know that these droppers from Giorgio Armani are really highly rated and raved about. So I just wanted to throw it out there that this one, if you want smaller pores and not such a weird cast on the skin, it might not work. I just don't like this. And it's expensive. It's super crazy expensive. So this is a pass. Um, none of this is drugstore, by the way. These are all luxury items or items that you would find at Sephora and not at Target, you know? This was really, really sweet that James attempted to get one of my favorite products, the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. He picked up the Invisible Loose Setting Powder and I gave it a whirl on camera when I did the Husband Buys My Makeup tag. I'll link that below. And this just made my pores look so noticeable. It actually sat on top of the skin and literally like amplified each and every pore and I hated it. It just felt weird and chalky and it took me a minute to be like, wait, why is this not working the same way as the translucent powder that I love so, so much that is like magic. That powder is incredible. So this one right here, it, oh Lord, what have I done? What have I done? <coughs> it's very powdery. It kind of feels like flour. Okay, A, if you want to avoid flashback, do not use any of these super finely milled HD-esque powders if you like the way they look because they can be beautiful on the skin. The one that I recommend is from Makeup Forever. This one is really, really great. This is the HD High Definition Powder. I believe Makeup Forever was the first brand to bring out this kind of a powder. I think they were. I think they were the first. But this is a beautiful product and it just kind of sits in the pores and in the wrinkles and kind of makes everything look more smooth where this one sits right on top and for some reason just makes your makeup look cakey and your skin look weird. So it is a pass. It's also $38. Mm -mm. Then we have this palette from NARS. This is the Narcissist Dual Intensity Cheek Palette. Now I actually really enjoy the dual intensity shadows and the blushes, but this as a palette just doesn't make sense to buy them all together. They are all so shimmery and you don't really get enough highlighty shades or shades to use just as like a pretty blush. I just really find these colors to be a bit overpowering and when you put them on alone, they are super shiny. And I just think the investment of this palette is not worth it because it's just not usable. It's not something you'll grab for every single day. Kind of like, you know, when you get an eyeshadow palette and they don't have enough mattes or they don't have enough dark ones to kind of create that edge on the corner of your eye or do lining. You know, when I look at a palette, whether it's a blush palette or an eyeshadow palette, I kind of want everything to join and work together. And that was my issue with this. This is from Laura Geller. This is the Just Blushing, a trio of baked blush shades. 
Now, for some reason, these just all look the same on the face. I just don't really use this. I don't really like it. It's a little bit overly shimmery, so you just look like highlight blush. So it just looks reflective. Even though the shades are a little bit different, they kind of, once they're on there, just all look the same and they just look like highlight on your face. So I'm not a fan of this. I really love the baked foundation. That's something I actually have been using again. I've never really gotten into any of the blushes or eyeshadows, but I do want to say the primers, the highlighters, those Swirl Gelato highlighters are incredible. And then the baked powder foundation is wonderful. So I'm not totally bashing any of these brands by any means. This is just something I don't think you need. I don't think you need three shimmery blushes in a little palette like this. It's kind of just like, why? I have a lip item from Ciate. I believe I showed this off in a recent unboxing. I have been trying this out. I thought it looked kind of cool. It is a potion for your lips. It says that you put this underneath any lip product and it's gonna create a fuller pout. I didn't see that. I didn't see fuller lips. I actually saw my lip products layering really funny and this is 20 bucks so... I'm gonna say it's not a magic pout potion. I like Ciate. Some of their lip products are great but... Mm -hmm. This is gonna come kind of as a shock because I'm gonna talk negatively about a concealer from Tarte. I know, you're probably thinking, what? The Tarte Shape Tape is her absolute diehard favorite and it is. That concealer is what I have come to compare everything to because that one takes care of my dark circles, it doesn't crease, it's long wearing, it layers, I can actually get away with putting more of it on top of my makeup throughout the day, which is such a rare thing for concealer. Normally it will bunch up with your powder, but the Tarte Shape Tape just really cannot do me wrong. So I'm kind of surprised I got this in PR and this is the Amazonian clay waterproof 12-hour concealer this one They've had in the range for a while and It goes on like if you swatch it on your hand It's very creamy very thick almost feels like a stick foundation But if you put this on a pimple or under the eye, it's just so thick that it almost looks shiny and then you go and put powder on top of it and it kind of amplifies any creasing, flaking, pores. It just kind of layers weird. I don't like this concealer. It's not for me. Die hard love the uh, shape tape. So this one made my under eye area look awful to the point where I'm like, I gotta take this off. We are starting fresh because no. Benefit Shy Beam. This one I really, wanted to like. I actually don't really like any of these that come in the liquid, to be honest. Like the Benetton that everyone is like, put an X on your cheek and wipe it out. And look, you're naturally gorgeous and glowing and you have flush cheeks. I remember asking for that one for Christmas when I was like 16, I got it and I was so disappointed. I was like, why is this a cult favorite? Why does everyone love it? I don't get it. This one right here, the Shy Beam is just a very thick highlighter and you can see it almost looks like concealer, right? Like you were supposed to highlight with this and it's just very, very thick and it just moves around your foundation. It says on the back that this is a highlighter without shine. So technically this is kind of like your concealer highlight, like if you do the triangles underneath your eyes or you could put it on the brow bone it says, but I just think this guy right here if you're going underneath the brow bone, it's gonna blend out way more than what you put on and be a mess, and I just don't like it. So I'm not changing my mind. I just don't like you. Right here, we have something from Trish McAvoy. This is the Instant Eye Lift, and I almost think of this as a little bit of a color corrector that you would put underneath another concealer because you're not gonna to wanna to just use this alone. I mean, you could, but it has such a weird, brightening kind of a thing. It actually almost looks like the Shy Beam. When you blend this out, it has kind of a stiff, tacky blend out. So layering other products on top is a bit of an issue. It's a more expensive item. I have been exploring more from Trish McAvoy and some of it is really good. This one just missed the mark for me. It basically is an overpriced color corrector that is a little bit sticky and tough to blend. Does anybody actually buy this stuff? I never see it on YouTube. I never hear anyone talking about it. It's the CK1 makeup line that you see at Ulta. This is a blush 
and you get powder on one side and you get a cream on the other, do not try to layer these because you would think, oh, they go together, this is great. Don't do it. It is the chunkiest, weirdest, streakiest, blotchiest mess that you will ever have. I actually had to redo my makeup when I used this. I was testing it out. And then I was like, well, maybe I can just use this one on my lip, but it's just so slippery and greasy and slidey that it just does not work out. This was a failure item for me. I'm not into it. Does anyone know, are there good products within the CK1 range at Ulta? Leave that in the comments below because to be honest, most of what I've tried has not worked out for me. I have recently come across a few drugstore mascaras that I think are top notch. The one from Koki Cosmetics and then the new Tease mascara from CoverGirl, which I am wearing today. I love them. They are affordable. They are good. They do not flake. They just do everything they say they are going to do on the package and I love it when I find a product like that. Now this from Japanesque is gonna be more expensive and it's just not worth it. It doesn't lengthen and it does smudge quite a bit. So when I come across a mascara that does not you know, leave me wowed. I have to tell you guys, especially when it's higher end because there are so many good affordable options. You're looking to cut a corner anywhere. That's a great corner to cut. I always think in my mind, like spend more money on concealer or foundation or skincare, but things like mascara and liners, a lot of the time you can get really, really good ones from the drugstore. So this Japanesque lash lengthening mascara is just not a fave and it's going in the pass pile. If you guys want more product regret videos more often, please give this video a thumbs up, share the video, leave me comments, let me know that you enjoy this and that it's not too much negative because for a while I was getting comments when I was posting a lot of fail videos. People are like, your channel is turning too negative, like what is going on? And I never wanna like pour like too many bad reviews your way, but I also wanna keep things very real and authentic too. So I kind of listen to your feedback and go by that on my channel because I post so often. So let me know. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're having a wonderful day, whatever you are doing. I love you so much and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Mwah.